In this lesson, we're going to use some splines to build a belt buckle. So this is going to be a much different workflow. We want to build sort of a flat, hard surface piece that's kind of cut out of metal. And so Cinema 4D has some really great tools for doing this. Let's start by building a couple of splines. And so let's create a, uh, let's just start with a rectangle. And you can make yours a little bit different than mine. That's fine. So you can see my rectangle is oriented in this way. You can change the way it's oriented by choosing the plane that it's drawn on, but this is fine. We'll leave it as uh, along the XY plane. But I want to add to this. So I don't want just a square. I want a little bit more detail uh, for this. And so let me just duplicate this a couple of times. Oops. So I'm just going to control drag it down so we get three rectangles. This rectangle, I'm going to change the width. So I'll make it a little bit wider. Uh, but I'll make it a bit narrower, so maybe, I don't know, maybe 120. I'm going to move it up here. And yours doesn't have to look ex exactly like mine. Um, you could also just now duplicate this one and bring that down instead of having your other duplicate there. So now what I want to do is I want to combine these into one object. So one sort of seamless spline that encompasses this whole thing. So to do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I want to join together these two. So I'll just say connect objects and delete. Oops, I don't need to do that. I want to actually make those editable first. That'll turn them into splines and then when I connect objects and delete it'll leave it as a spline. So because it was a, a primitive still, it wanted to turn that into uh, like a polygon shape. So let's take our other rectangle and make that into just an editable spline. And then I want to bring in something called the spline mask. And I'll drop both of these splines into the spline mask. And you can see already, uh, we've got the mode set to A, union B. So what it's doing is taking the first one and it's making a union out of the second one. So you can see here A union B along the Z axis. If we were to change the axis, you'd get a different result because of the way that our splines are drawn. Uh, we could also subtract out B from A or intersection. And what you do also, you know, will change based on your the order of your splines in there. So you can see that gives you a different result. But if you're doing a union, um, that doesn't matter. We can still go in and select any of the splines and we can modify those uh, to get the result that we want. Now we can also come in here and let's select these points on the end. Okay, so we've got those points. Right now they're completely sharp. If we go to right click and go to chamfer, I'll click and drag that and that you can see I can get a little bit of a curve there. So that kind of allows us to round off those. Okay, so let's say we want something like that. Now we don't have any geometry on this yet. And so let's bring in, uh, let's go over here and bring in an extrude. And I'm just going to drop the spline mask underneath. I don't even need to bake this down if I don't want to. And then with extrude, that'll actually add geometry to your splines. Now. You've got caps, which tell how the front and back are created. Right now, they're just straight caps, so you can see this line is very, very sharp. But if you change that to a fillet cap, you can come in and change the type of bevel. We can also change the amount. So we can get something that's a little bit more rounded off. And if you want to do more, you know, add a couple of steps to that, you can round it off. So let's take our extrude now. And let's scale it down. I'm going to kind of put it into position here. We'll probably want to add a little bit more thickness to it, but let me scale it down first. Kind of put it right around his belt there. Right around his waist. So if I want to add some thickness, we can go into the extrude, go to object, and we can change the movement. So we can make it a lot thicker. Just holding down Alt to get a little bit finer control over that. And I'll just push it in. 
Okay, if that's a little bit too thick, again, you can just dial that thickness down there. Okay, so working with splines in Cinema 4D is actually really, really easy, and it's actually a lot of fun. So uh, we'll do um, another piece here in the next lesson that's kind of similar to that using some other splines um, and creating some geometry from that. So uh, let's go ahead in the next lesson and use the same sort of technique to create kind of a, an insignia for his sort of uniform here. So let's go ahead and do that next.